This section of property transactions is on like-kind property. Like-kind exchanges. Where we have a like-kind exchange, where we're swapping property and cash does not change hands, we will defer the gains or losses. And this is mandatory treatment. We don't have the, the uh, option of deciding what gains and losses we recognize. All gains and losses on like-kind exchanges are mandatory. So the first thing we have to decide is what is a like-kind exchange. And U.S. real property, for U.S. real property, is considered a like-kind exchange. And that is true even if you use like a third party to put it together. So maybe you like a piece of property in Denver, and the people in Denver like a piece of property in New York City, and the people in New York City like a piece of property in Corpus Christi. There can be a three-way exchange, and that's fine. At the end of the day, though, did you end up with some kind of real property in exchange for real property? And if you did, and both pieces are in the United States, you have a like-kind exchange. Personal property, on the other hand, uh, which is anything other than real estate, um, is a, we're a lot more finicky about what constitutes a like-kind. And the property of, that you're giving up has to match in function the property that you're getting and vice versa in order for it to qualify as a like-kind exchange. The property must be held for productive use or for investment. So this includes like inventory, investments, trust. And we saw in another module where we were very, even very fussy about uh, investments. So, so an exchange of common stock for preferred stock was not a like-kind exchange, for example. Um, if you are exchanging property with a related party, it has to be held for two years in order to qualify as a like-kind exchange. Also, when you're exchanging property, like where we did the example uh, a minute ago between New York and Denver and Corpus Christi, the exchanges don't have to be simultaneous exactly, but they must be near simultaneous and you must know what it is that you're exchanging for at the time you make the exchange. Take, for example, Green Acres. Green Acres is an old TV show from the 1960s, and what basically happens is that somebody this couple here, Oliver Douglas and his wife, uh, Oliver was an attorney in New York City, and he decides he's had it with the hectic attorney life, and he wants to move into a farm upstate, and so he trades his uh, life as an attorney to be a farmer in upstate, and it's very rural, and they're kind of fish out of water, um, and we see that he's farming, but he's farming in a suit, and he's farming with work gloves, not work gloves, but with butler gloves, for example. So Oliver Douglas and his wife trade a Manhattan penthouse for a farm in upstate New York. Does this qualify for a like-kind exchange? Pause this, come up with your answer, and come back. Yes, it's a like-kind exchange, because while the Manhattan apartment is very, very different than the farm in upstate New York, the Manhattan apartment uh, was a skyscraper, had a beautiful uh, city view, the farm in upstate New York had lots of pigs, the Manhattan apartment did not. Uh, does it qualify as a like-kind exchange? Yes, because they were both real property. They didn't match in function at all, but U.S. real property for U.S. real property is a like-kind exchange. Now, would trading a Mercedes used in New York to get to work and a tractor qualify? And the answer is no, because this is personal property, and the personal property has to match much more closely in function than real property has to. Exchange of boot on like-kind exchanges. So far, we've said that if you ch exchange things, then a gain or loss is deferred. If you exchange like-kind things with no cash, well, boot or assumption of liabilities or a non-like-kind property is an example of uh, something that's going to upset the apple cart and, and be an exception to the rule here. And it's an exception to the rule if boot is received. If you're not the one receiving boot, then gain or loss deferral still holds for you. If you're the one giving boot, gain or loss deferral still holds for you. But if you receive boot, it, what changes your, is your ability to pay the tax on the gain. And since you now are liquid and have the ability to pay the tax on the gain, we are going to tax you on the lesser of the gain that you realized or the amount of boot received. Now, if what you receive is not cash, then we value the basis of the boot at fair market value. Um, so we're going to need an, if you're
you're going to recognize a gain for tax purposes, that changes the equation on boot. Now, when we exchange, and there's no cash, the basis in the new property is equal to the basis in the old property. When we have an exchange, like kind of exchange, no cash. The basis in the new property is the basis in the old property. But when we have boot, the basis in the new property is the basis in the old property plus or minus the net boot given and plus or minus the gain or loss recognized for tax purposes. So the equation just got a lot more difficult there as indicated by the green font. If we have a like kind exchange, no cash received, basis in the new property is basis in the old property. If there is gain received or a boot received, then your new basis is the amount that you're out of pocket for tax purposes. Now, the holding period for the boot begins with the exchange. The like-kind property, regardless of whether or not there is boot, has a carryover holding period. That is, the holding period starts when you bought the first property, regardless of whether you've held, of how long you've held the second property. Finally, let's try a question on this. Which one of the following exchanges of property used for business or investment purposes are not a like-kind exchange? We're looking for what is not a like-kind exchange. Now, a warehouse for condom, pause this, come back. A warehouse for condominium is like-kind because it's U.S. real property for U.S. real property. A beach house for a yacht is not because I'm going from real property to personal property. So B is the correct answer. But let's look at the last two. Uh, a Cadillac for an escort, we both have cars in that case and they have the same function, so that would be a like-kind exchange. And an apartment building for a vacant lot uh, are both real property, so that would be a like-kind exchange. And that's the last point on the like-kind exchange module.